I don't know if you've ever seen what a raid in World of Warcraft looks like, but as I was playing the game the other day, it just blew my brains out how absolutely complex the interactions I'm having. You know, there could be 25 people, everyone is doing a whole lot of very complex things, and the whole experience is delivered seamlessly. And this is inside of a video game that is from 2004. It's over 20 years old. That feels like when the internet was incepted, you know, the genesis of the online world. How does that process even come to be? Something that is so delightful. And so I was playing my video game and I was like, I just genuinely wonder how that process works. So I did some research and I'm going to share it all with you in this video. So to begin, every video game has two core components. One is you and you are known as the client or more specifically the technology on which you play or interact with the video game is known as the client so that could be potentially your playstation that could be your computer that could be a psp and so essentially it's the conduit through which you can enjoy the video game the client the counterpart to the client is known as the server and for this particular demonstration what we're going to do is think of the client as being a computer we all play video games on a computer it's something we can all relate to and we're going to think of the server as being a computer on steroids absolutely enhanced to the teeth you know some kind of extreme powerhouse and the reality is that it's just a whole lot of computers running in parallel so we have these two components we have you playing on the client and we have the server that's somewhere off in the ethos you know, realistically, it's just a physical location on the planet or potentially many physical locations. And together, that creates the experience of playing a massively multiplayer online role playing game such as World of Warcraft. How on earth does this process work? To start off, what we have to understand is where information is saved. So first up, when you download a video game onto your computer, you're downloading something so intrinsically there's going to be something on your computer world of warcraft is a massive game it's actually a bit of a plague at the moment video games just get really bloated you know it's not uncommon that you'll download a video game and it's like i'll need 200 gigabytes of space please on your computer thank you very much world of warcraft's a bit like that the old game is actually probably only about five gigabytes of data so it's not a whole lot but what are you actually downloading well i can tell you what it's not other people's information other people's character statuses so what we are actually downloading is static assets now if you want to think about what that is in terms of a video game like world of warcraft that's everything that doesn't change geography landscapes npc characters all of this kind of stuff as information that can be downloaded on your computer and essentially you could theoretically interact with it offline if you just logged into the game and didn't have that massively multiplayer online feel, kind of like Skyrim, Skyrim is a great example of a video game where it's obvious what you're downloading. Everything, the maps that you interact with, the NPC characters, the fonts, the soundtracks, the visuals, all of that is run on the client from your computer, which is cool. So the counterpart to that is all the information that belongs on the server. Now this is why, this is the crux of the massively multiplayer online. So what video games do is that they have on the server, which is just this God tier computer, a database and RAM. Now your database is long-term storage. The problem with the database is that as much as it can hold loads of information, it works a bit like a brain where your brain has a very long-term storage and then it has an active unit and this active unit cannot hold as much information but it's much faster at processing reading and writing sending out taking in new information and deciding what to do with it so the servers work like this brain they have a really long-term data persistent storage system and they have ram which is random access memory and the ram is like a, a smaller temporary database that holds live rapidly changing information and this, in every MMORPG, is the global source of truth. Everything that goes on in the game is defined here. So this could be the health of your character. This could be items in your inventory. This could be 
the skills that you have available to you. This could be your level. This could be your geographical location, where you exist in the map, in, in the world, whatever online reality it may be. And this information needs to be accessed incredibly quickly. So everything that is rapidly changing is stored on the server. Everything that is constant could theoretically be accessed offline and saved on your computer, such as the map. So now that we understand where the information is saved, how do we create this synchronized experience where myself and another player on the other side of the planet can have an interaction online that feels real time? And it's via a couple of mechanics. The first one is what's known as a tick rate. So since we've established that all of the live rapidly changing data is managed on this server, which is just this God tier computer, our game, our client needs to send a request across the internet to the server asking for the current status of all the live rapidly changing information. And it does this on a tick rate and different games have different tick rates. RuneScape has a relatively slow tick rate. World of Warcraft, which has smooth, seamless PvP, has a much faster tick rate. It's approximately 20 ticks per second. So that's every 50 milliseconds, we're getting the most recent information. And when you try to do something in the game, what happens is your client could potentially send information to the server, update this global source of truth, and then someone else's computer could fetch that information and that change is then visible on their device. Now, if you're playing an FPS game, the tick rate could be potentially 60 ticks per second, which is 60 FPS, a frame per second. And that's pretty much as fast as your brain can conceptualize this new information. Now, one of the interesting things that happens is you have these 50 millisecond chunks, if we think about World of Warcraft, where I fetch some information and then for 50 milliseconds, I'm continuously playing. I don't just, I don't just stop for 50 milliseconds and wait for the next chunk of information. And so what your video game does cleverly is it anticipates or interpolates the likely next action. And a, a good way to uh, understand this is when someone lags. If you've ever experienced someone lagging in a video game, they can be like jumpy. They can be here one second and then maybe they materialize over here and then it jumps all over the place. And what's happening there is your video game is interpolating their action, but because of some kind of delayed network request or inability to find the most recent information from the database or potentially even send that information to the database. And so for us and everybody else playing on the game who's relying on the server for this global source of truth we have no idea and so our games do the best at anticipating or interpolating what their likely next action is but it could potentially be two seconds until we actually get you know a verified truth of what their action has been in which case our game is smart enough to you know after it's anticipated their next action if it were to be wrong it reconciles it with the server so that everybody now has the same information and that is where you get this jumpy behavior it looks like they're running and then the next second they're over here and that's because they have more latency they might be lagging and that's a real pain no one likes no one likes some bad ping so the other interesting thing to know about is what latency actually is so latency is defined as the time taken for information to leave your device or potentially one of these ticks to go out from your device, your device sends off a request to the server, which has is the global source of truth, asking for the status of an enemy character that's another person playing on the other side of the planet so that I can absolutely whoop their hiney into the next dimension. The latency is the time it takes for me to send that request to the server and the server to send that information back. Now there's different ways of creating these network requests. Some are slower, and some are faster. Some are less secure, some are more secure. When we're looking for these rapid things, we use some less or some essentially faster transfer protocols, which can send and receive information more rapidly. And so the latency is the time taken for that round trip. So let's say I shoot someone inside of Call of Duty. My computer 
sends that information, sends that action off to the server. And the server's like, okay, did that end destination of that bullet align with the current geophysical location of the enemy unit? And the server decides the global truth. It is like the arbiter of justice. It decides what happened and what didn't. And if those locations matched, if the bullet did intercept the enemy user, then the server sends out that information to, or it responds to me saying, nice shot. And the next time the enemy unit's computer or clients looks up their current health, which is saved in the RAM on the server, they find out that they've just been hit and they have less health. And so collectively, we are all asking the server what the current status of the gameplay is on our tick rate. And our game is interpolating the time between the tick rate and then reconciling it when it gets this new information. And that all happens in a way that is seamless. And that is the genius of programmers. A good programmer creates an experience that feels smooth, even though technically it's happening, you know, every 50 milliseconds potentially. Now, if you were to log off your game, what happens is your RAM or the RAM of the server acknowledges that you have exited the game, you are no longer connected. And so it might choose to save your information to the database and free up some of its active processing brain, its RAM, so that it can allocate it to somebody else. And then when you log back in, it might quickly read that information from the database, load it into the the live active memory so that it can be used and you can interact with your online adventure and have the most crazy raid nights with the boys for hours deep into the deep into the early morning an absolutely great experience and i just think it's absolutely mind-boggling that's something we get to experience i think it's brilliant love myself some online video games and hopefully 